Valerie says, I'm trying to create a Teams template, including a OneNote book and an Excel file that needs to be a fresh copy each time, not a live linked copy. Can anyone point me in the right direction? It's complex. It's really the only way because templates, you know, in the way that they actually work, and I mean, you can have an Excel file that's set as a template file, but if you're trying to add it in as a tab, that it becomes new every time, that's then, you know, not going to be as easy done. Um, <laughs> Because it becomes a challenge because ultimately that's a template file. So every time you click on it, it's going to generate something new. Um, now, the OneNote book is, is a little different in terms of the way you can actually build it into OneNote that you can go use this. To, once it's created, then have a, have a bit of a script where you can go use this OneNote book um, and have it sort of generate some stuff. But... It is going to be a tough one because you're going to have to build out some quite specific workflows, um, scripts and tools that you can buy. It's not an not an easy thing at this point with Teams templates. It's getting there. It is getting there, but it's still not as easy as what we would like it to be to have all that custom created, just regenerate with this. I find it's easier if I go, and this is a OneNote book that's a template and copy and put it in. Um, and that you do it, you can do it if you're creating a new team from an administrator standpoint, where they go, when I create a team, it's going to be like that. Then they drop those parts in for you. But it's not auto process at this point yet. Yeah, I agree with you. I I create like a standardized team for let's say it's for a mm -hmm. project, and this is my OneNote notebook. The yep. OneNote notebook that comes when you when you create a team, you get a SharePoint site. The OneNote notebook is in the asset library, which I don't understand that mentality why they put it in the asset library personally. But mm -hmm. um, I like to create another document library that has just the notebooks, and I call it notebooks. And the, those are surfaced right there, but it's not the one that's naturally tied to Teams and or SharePoint. And um, then it, when I create a new team and I need those same assets again, all I have to do is copy them from one site to the other. And that seems to be the workaround for this point in time because we don't have like, or you can do a Power Automate script that'll create the whole team and it, it'll create everything for you. But it, it like you're saying, it's not out of the box. And it's not easy. It's not like I need a new team for a project. And here's all the stuff that I put in a project every single time. And they mm -hmm. say it's a template. It's not. I my It still comes up with the default look and feel. I, it's just a little frustrating because it has to generate that SharePoint site in the background, too. And it doesn't seem to set it up the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Because when it's creating a um, template, it's just creating it with custom channels. It's creating with specific tabs that it might actually include for an application, but it's not saying customize the content in the tabs to meet the needs of that type of team. Right. That's probably yeah, I think you get a little it. more flexibility through, not not much, I would say through third party uh, um, you know, provisioning tools yeah. that yes. automate a lot of that process because they yeah. they're working from the same set of tools as microsoft is building their solution in. So they could have a much cleaner friendlier um, user experience and automate a lot of things but it's doing the same thing it's creating that sharepoint site which has the default assets that it adds into it you can add things like you can add uh you know through some of the provisioning solutions uh, you can add tabs, you can add apps, um, you can then, of course, the other benefit of having provisioning solution is that uh, from an administrative perspective is you can make sure that all the guardrails are in place, your lifecycle management, the approval process, again, only the approved uh, third party apps that are allowed in the, the structure of the channels that you want in the team, all of that you can have as part of your template, so that an end user can always add to that or remove things, but like to your point, Sherry, you know, they, they're all, all projects look the same. All mm -hmm. community initiatives uh, the company does look the same, have the same parts there. But when you start going in, I mean, the, the other, this is something that came up and I'm sure Kirsty, you were in some of those discussions too at MVP summit a couple of weeks back. So many people asking is like, why did you spread out? digital assets 
across so many locations. Like this doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It makes administration fine and search makes it cumbersome. Mm -hmm. You know, why did you do it this way? Mm -hmm. And there's historical reasons for some of that. Some things are changing. Like wiki is going away. Like you'll be able to optionally add in a wiki, but it's not, things are not there by default. One yeah. note will be there where one note is, how it, how it, uh, you know, acts. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all that stuff is, it's evolving. So mm -hmm. please provide your feedback to Microsoft so yeah. they understand how, you know, the use cases of how people are, you want yeah. it to work. Yeah, um, it's a watch list. We're, we're not the yeah. only squeaky wheels no. out there. A lot of people no, no, are doing no, no, yeah, this, right? And, you know, watch yeah. this space because I know, you know, I, ha I had it recently, a landscaping company that do projects. And it's like we need the one notebook and we need the plan to pretty much be exactly the same every single time for our template. And it's like, well, you can create a plan and have it there as a template and you can copy and just pop it in each time right. but the auto generation of it to then go in i mean you you probably could and i mean i i'm not in the space of all of the power automate and the you know setting it all up and the duplicate it and bring it over and get it ready and you probably could but you know that's outside my scope and maybe yeah. maybe you can but you can yeah, yeah okay, and actually yeah. so she's not here of course but sharon weaver actually left in the notes she said her response. So I know she was going exactly there. She's like, mm. you can spend a bunch of time and money to mm. build workflows using scripts yeah. or buy a tool. So yeah. look into some of the third party tools that will give you a lot more options. Yeah. Which is why I kind of said right back at the beginning. And I know that it's there, but I, how to do it. It's not my forte. <laughs> yep. People with way more brains than, you know, my blonde head can cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a skill set. <laughs> it's a different one.